Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matt, and I am that campaign guy. And welcome to Rome Total War, the strategy game to end all strategy games. I've clocked thousands of hours on this game, and will happily say that not a second of that has been wasted. I do love this game. I thoroughly love this game. Now, this is my very first YouTube video, YouTube Let's Play, and I do not intend to be playing a Roman faction, at least not for this Let's Play. I will play the Romans in the future, both the Julii, Brutii, and the Scipii. They will be the premise of individual videos. No, for now, I intend to play the hardest faction on the hardest difficulty. And for those of you who have ever played Rome Total War before, you'll know that the hardest faction is Numidia. Now, Numidia is the hardest faction for two very good reasons. First of which is their roster. Their roster is not only uh, small and very limited, all their units are very weak. They're, uh, they're very light infantry and light cavalry based roster, which can be useful in open plains, but by about turn 20 or turn 30, they have maxed out the number of units that they can recruit, whereas the other nations have barely even to scratch the surface of their entire unit roster. This kind of means that during the middle of the game, the uh, Numidians are completely overwhelmed in terms of the quality of troops that can be fielded. The same uh, floor is due to Numidia's location. Numidia may be located in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, so they don't have any danger to the uh, to the west or the south, but they are surrounded by the three most powerful nations in the early game, that being the Carthaginians, the Egyptians, and the Romans. Obviously the Romans being separated into several different factions, but all of them are close and all of them will attack you if you play as Numidia. Uh, compared to these three mighty nations, you are in a very commercially poor area. These guys are able to trade with each other and have ports all over the place. As you Midia, you don't start off with a port. And you can you can eventually get one, but because of the uh, the arid nature of your lands, you just can't grow quick enough. You won't have the money to be able to afford it. And during this time, there'll be countless raids from each of these nations, many incursions into your land. So the only way to hold up Numidia is to play very aggressively and to take out your neighbours as fast as possible, to hold on to their lands and to march forth. Okay, so yes, I intend to be very aggressive with this campaign. So, enough talking, let's get cracking. Last night, the crying of the children kept me awake, and I had a terrible vision. I saw the fall of our city, bleached bones under a harsh sun. Carthage, gone. Why would Baal send such a vision? He is not cruel. He has watched over us. We have had victories aplenty in war. Our merchants sail to all corners of the world. And yet now, I fear I cannot help it. We are the envy of lesser people. They tell terrible lies about us. They do not understand, so they lie. But the Romans, they are the masters of falsehood. War will come. I am sure of it. So. I will have no more false visions, and I think the children will be quiet tonight. And here we are on the campaign map as Numidia. As you can see, we have four territories scattered across Africa, so from uh, Morocco to Algiers, Paris to Berlin, or oh, not quite. But yes, Numidia itself didn't exist in 270 BC, there wasn't one kingdom of Numidia spread out with one weird outpost down in Libya. 
in Siwa. There's uh, it was like a confederation of just random Berber kingdoms launched around. So the uh, the Masili and the Mas Mas Masili Masili, yeah, the Masili. We just call them Masili. There was two kingdoms. The other one, the Masili, was Syfax, and Masili being uh, Masinissa. This is the end of the uh, Second Punic War, where there was eventual formation of Numidia. Anyway. Right, so as I said, this is being, going to be very kamikaze. We have to take out Egypt and Carthage as soon as possible. Being in much stronger trade positions than we are, they're going to be able to gain a lot of money. And with that, they'll be able to send stack after stack, particularly down here at Siwa. If I leave the Egyptians even for five or six turns, they're going to to spam Nubian spearmen and archers. They're going to launch raid after raid down here, and I will eventually fall. Like this, I can't defend the sewer, so I have to start taking their cities. So the way I'm going to do it, is sending one Numidian cab down to Thebes, and take that, and this one, under Mutinez of the, uh, I guess of the Nassimones, or um, I get the Nassimones are more down this way, just a general African tribe in Libya. There were Greeks down in Libya, so it could be a Greek, nah, it's the Nassimones. There were Greeks, a like Koine, or common. It's so more of a language, but they, uh, it's what it's called of Greeks in Egypt, Queenie. Anyway. Wow. Let's get that and that. So the peasants should keep public order. They should add about 40, maybe 50. It's quite a small settlement, so the peasants should do more than enough. And the roads will help us get to Egypt. Just one, one extra space, a single road just adds one extra block. But that's more than enough. It also highlights where the roads are. It goes roughly this way towards Alexandria and here towards e uh, towards uh, Thebes. Hey, and same over here, we're going to get the road. Just for a little extra boost in uh, in distance that we can get for our units. Okay, now Carthage at the moment is relatively undefended, but it's going to have a big force there soon. The, uh, the force that starts in Lebeum always comes back to Carthage and camps outside. Uh, it's uh, Hasdrubal, or uh, one of them is one of the either faction leader or faction heir, uh, comes back with an army with elephants and Iberian infantry and all kinds of nasty things. I should say nasty things is not actually that bad. There's just a lot of them. Okay. And last but not least is our army in Mauritania, or the Catulians and Mauritanians under King Gizko, who is chilling in Tingi. Great name, great name Tingi. But he is going to be launching an army into Spain. We're going to do this very early. Because we're going to be uh, our pace on our eastern front, or our northern front here in uh, uh, Sicily and Italy, or first in Africa. And also in Egypt is going to be slow. At least maybe we're going to be here lingering for about 20 turns I imagine. Just or maybe 15 turns, just because there's uh, again, there's going to be a lot of forces down here. We're going to be fighting these wars for a while. Whereas Spain, there will be a couple Spanish stacks to deal with, as well as one with Gaul. But if we can take Spain and we can have considerable force over here, because uh, if we can take Cord Dord <laughs> fucking pronoun Cordoba, we can get the ports and we can start building up financially, and we can start invading France up into Britain and Germany and start really expanding over this way, which will help financially against Rome and Egypt. So yeah, to do that, we're going to have... We're going to build the governor's villa, build a port, and then sail right over. Over here, we've got the remaining... the remainder of our force. We're going to send that down to Tembi. I mean, Neptune in a fucking Tembi. Not going to get Tembi. We're going to go to a... <laughs> we're going to go to a seaside in Wales. Of course! That, that would you believe I actually attempted a Welsh accent there? But just came out some high pitched scream. Okay, anything else? I believe we have mercenaries higher. Huzzah! There we go. I believe that's everything. I'm just gonna check, see finances yet low, yet very high. Yep. Oh, no, even very high and high. There we go. Now, one fun thing you can do 
is get money from rich factions early in the game, at least within the first two turns or three turns. Um, the rich factions being Egypt and Carthage. Uh, you can normally get them up to about 3,000 and nothing more. There we go, 3,000. Thank you, good sir. You bargained well. Right. Thank you for giving me your eyes. Okay. Now we're just gonna. We've got the money from Carthage, and they're gonna be poised and ready to attack us, so we have to get on the front foot. Right. There we go. This force is going straight to Thapsus. Then we're gonna be reinforced as fast as we can. Okay, and we're gonna bring this new Midian Cav along. Increase distance with our road. One more Midian Cav here. Then we're gonna need to do anything else with the tax rate or buildings. We need our money for troops right now. Okay, this cab's gonna come up to Tingy. To Gizgo Party Man of Tingy. And this uh Captain Ash Ashtazaf? Ashtazaf. Ashtazap? Ashtazaf. He's going down to Tink uh, Yeah, no. Tink no. Nepti. Going to Nepti. He's not going to the seaside resort in Wales, he's going to Nepti in the sub Saharan desert. As much as he wants to go to Tembi, he can't go to Tembi. Right, now you better fucking speak to me. Egypt has this uh, has this thing where they uh, they like to camp outside a sewer but don't actually talk to me. Which is annoying because I want them to give me my money! Okay, they've, they've walled thieves. That's not going to be a problem. Okay... I'm going to take this mercenaries. We've got 542 remaining. What can we do with that? We can either get some walls or. Or, 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 or. Actually, how much do we. Uh, end on 29. Uh, end on 100. Uh, end on minus 1 and 1. It's not. I was thinking maybe get a peasant unit and build the wall, but it really isn't worth it. We only get 50 for the extra uh, extra tax rate. So we're just going to go over here and we're going to get shrine to Baal. Okay. I think that is everything he's doing this turn. I'm just going to launch you ahead so you can see what's going on. Okay, next turn. Ah. Oh. Fantastic. So worried. Thank you, good sir. I up your fair offer of simple trade and demand that you give me all of your money. Why, thank you. That's actually never happened. <laughs> oh, you're fucking kidding me. Right. Okay, we're going to have to do a false draw here. We can probably do it. Imagine if I beat Captain Valhano here. We can draw them back to Thapsus. Bring out Burrus. And win the day. Right, okay, so can you get in? Seen but unseen. Ooh, hello. Do I... What do I want to do? No. I am actually going to fight this here. I'm going to do a force draw out anyway. I'd rather fight. I would much rather fight Burris out in the open where I can surround him than in the settlement. Or do I? Do I want to take him in the settlement? We can restate. No, I'm gonna take him out in the open. Okay, so the objective here is not to kill 85% of 
because if we kill 85% the whole army is wiped out so we're going to make sure that we only kill these round shield cav and the Iberian infantry and that is going to be it. Okay, get these guys formed up in a in a box so they're more maneuverable. I find if they're uh, if they spread too wide, kind of here, it's quite hard to maneuver them. Okay, actually, you want to be a little bit wider because you want to get charge. Okay. Yep. Right, let's get cracking. Right, as I said, this is our priority, these round shield cav. Because if anything is going to get away from us in this battle and the next battle outside Thapsus, it's going to be these guys. If I can take them out here, it's going to save me a lot of pain in the future. Right, where are you going to go? Okay, that's gone pretty well. Can you please take them out? Stop firing on them, fire on those guys! Hey, right, good, good, good. Now, those town militia, I do want to rout. No, sorry, I want them to just leave the battlefield. I want to get rid of these Iberian infantry. Just for no other reason than these guys are weaker. That should do it. That should take that should route them. So he says, and they counter charge. Okay, these guys should soon try and run from the battlefield. Come on, run, 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 run. Run away. Run away. Run away. Okay, let's take out these. Oh, good. Don't get. Don't. Not one of you get killed. Good. Come on. Oh my god, just route. Please, please, just route. Oh, there we go. Good. These men are perfect. They are running from the battle in terror. That'll do. Victory. Right, good. And they should fall back to Thapsus. He says. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Please, please, please. Yes, yes. Glorious victory. Good. Now I should have two. 
I have two bites of the cherry here. Because this is going to draw up Burris. But even if I don't kill Burris, the gates are opened. So first point of call, kill Burris. Then get these guys. These guys can't rout. Burris can. Is he coming from a moment? Tapped him down there. So Burris is coming to my right, my right flank. The reinforcements are here, but will they be enough for final victory? Okay. Now I want a nice, a nice horse sandwich here. So we're going to charge him with our general. And we're going to come in on the flanks with our two new Midian cavalry, blocking off the exit. Left jabs on for now. It shouldn't do too much damage to our own general. Okay. Force to press Alt, so that our generals, yep, see, those little short swords doing so much more damage, the secondary. If you hold Alt as you attack with a cavalry unit, or for, uh, for elite cavalry units like bodyguards or cataphracts, they bring out a secondary weapon, which is normally better against uh, armoured cavalry units. So if you're fighting, say, other generals' bodyguards or other cataphract units, they just deal so much more damage. Okay, now let's deal with these guys. These guys won't be a problem. All I've got to do is kill 85% of them. Just make sure they don't route from the field. They can't actively flee towards there unless I've got them to be routing anyway. It's going to scoot around them. Got like a double unit Canterbury in circle here. Okay, no, we're out of jabs. Come and charge. Good. Bon, 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 bon. Extermination will bring a lot more money in the short term. It'll bump me up to about uh, 4,300, but I do want Thapsus to grow. I want Thapsus to give me more money. So I'm actually going to disperse the population, which will increase, my, increase the population in other cities. It hasn't gone to uh, Serta. Maybe it's gone to Siwa or. No. Oh, just they haven't gone anywhere. Oh well. Let's 
fab. Anyway, who needs slaves? Okay, we're going to continue our campaign against the Carthaginians. Their main army has landed. It's a worryingly large army. Ten units with elephants and one very large general's bodyguard. Okay, we're going to reinforce and employ another one of these cav units and the Numidian cav. We're also going to move our Numidian cav from uh, Dimidi straight up towards Tingi to br get ready to ready up our Getulian force, our invasion force. Likewise, we're going to get a port so we can eventually get a ship to get across here and take Cordoba. Okay, now for the Egyptian front. Right. Well, we've used all the mercenaries in this region. I believe we have one more unit we can get when we're in Egypt. We're going to need them. Okay. Three units and three units. In terms of population, I think Memphis has more people. Even though Alexandria has a coastline, which uh, can yield trade, I think Memphis at the, at the moment has a... Uh, an archer barracks, or uh, so I forgot what it's called, it's like a practice camp or something. But that can give us access to archers, which we will need a lot of. Also, the walls are more defendable. So, I go bring it all over here. Oh, hello. Fab. Okay, so we have all the troops we're going to get. You're going to come around here. You're going to besiege Memphis. Captain Oxinta is going to reform. Like so. And form up that. Let's see. That doesn't say. Now, I believe Memphis normally has two generous bodyguards. Yep. Yeah. Amhos and Kunumhotep. Kunumhotep. Kunotep. Now you can tell me how it's pronounced. But yeah, we've got these two generals. He'd leave. He's the faction. He is faction heir, not leader, and just normal member, and probably a slinger or a skirmisher or something. Um, oh, small note. This is an incredibly dumb thing to do. Uh, this is known as a force drawout, and force drawouts on their own are absolutely fine. But this is a force drawout against chariots. One thing you may know is that in a force drawout, once you've routed a unit, you can't keep attacking it. For some reason, there's a glitch in the game. Uh, so it just means that when you've got an attack order on, the unit just your unit just stops. It just won't attack. Which is fine for most units. They'll just rally and you can attack them again and kill them. But for chariots, <laughs> if they're routing in your troops and you can't attack them, their size are going to mess you up. Particularly if we have light troops like this. So we have to be super careful. We have to hit them just with our skirmishers and make sure when they route, we're not next to them. We're also going to besiege Thebes down here. Uh, we're not going to be storming the settlement. That's also going to be a forced draw out. This will be... Thank you if you're finished. This will be a bit easier. Um, we're just going to tire these guys out. We're going to hit them. We're going to take the settlement. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. Okay, 600 cash remaining. What can I do? What can he do? Oh, there we can see we've got uh, two Iberian infantry, three town militia, one round shield cav, one Numidian mercenary, elephants, and Hasdrubal, which will have a large generous bodyguard. That's Hanno. Now. Let's get a road. Always good to get some extra roads. Numidia and Carthage. I must be fucking insane. Okay. Oops, forgot to move you. Right, first battle in Egypt. Kumotep has come out against us. He has a uh, his close friend and buddy Amhos, followed by some slingers. Now these slingers aren't going to be a problem, but it's these guys. But we do have uh, our skirmishers, which do which are super effective against chariots, but it's just their range. The fact they archer cav 
It's going to be a tight battle. Hey, okay, let's go. Right. Send them to the point of crisis. With all haste. Please don't glitch. Units in this game glitch very, very easily. I think they've already glitched. Oh, you're fucking kidding me. Oh, no, no, no. I think they're good. I think they're good. Okay, they're coming out the settlement. Oh, the pyramids of Giza. Let's have a look. Well, I want to see them. <laughs> ah. I've always wanted to go to Egypt and see the pyramids of Giza. The oldest wanderer or human wanderer of the world, both in the ancient wonders and the seven wonders of the modern world. Okay, here's our main force. Now, our general's gonna pop over here. He's already warmed up, he'll be tired by the time he gets here. Okay, just waiting for all of our troops to get in. It's annoying, they always form up in this very long, long line. So, these are uh, the ones on the flanks, always getting quite late. Okay, well, one of the chariot units has gone out alright, what about the other one? Well, he's moving, he's not stuck, which is always a good sign. Okay, all my troops have formed up, or oh, they're not formed up, they're, uh, they're in the battle. Well, the bounce bar says it's in our favour, but it really isn't. These guys have much higher attack and range than us. Their defence is terrible. I believe they only have one point in defence. So if we can uh, either blob them or shoot them from afar, we should be golden. Okay, here they come. Now, I've seen multiple tactics launched by these guys. Sometimes they goon rush. Sometimes I like to sit back and just fire in. So let's see what they do. Okay. Okay, they're just going to fire in. So we... I'll go and push up. Okay. Now, I'm not doing a whole lot of damage just now. But after a while, these javelins are going to cause some damage and hopefully kill the two generals. If we can... That's something I should have mentioned. With a force draw out, it doesn't matter if you don't kill the entire army or even kill 85%, even if you just rout the army and they lose the battle, you take the settlement. So we don't need to kill all of them, we just need to rout them. Okay, 
Okay, them sync still works in our favour. I hope this continues. Yes, we're taking casualties, but actually this isn't too many. Okay, looks like they fired a couple at my general. I've only lost 15%, that isn't many. And I do have to be wary. Those are slingers? They're slingers. They've still got, they've got a whole people all the way back there. Yes, there's one general down. And hose. Okay, we've got one more. Ah, if we can kill their general. Come on. Yes. That's where you are. Okay. Come on, come on. Yes. The from the there we go. Okay, Memphis is ours. Great. Glorious victory. This land is ours. Okay, you get 600. That's not too much. But we do get to keep a lot of the population, which will help us in the long run. But then again, uh, no. Actually, we're going to enslave. We are going to enslave it. Okay, fab. Okay, this is the second battle against Egypt. It's their garrison force at Thebes. Not too, they're not a strong garrison, just uh, bowmen, some spearmen, peasants and whatnot. This actually is going to be easier than the other one. I've made it odd since we only have one unit of Numidian Cav. I, I swear, I haven't like... But Numidian Cav are an underrated unit, or is an underrated unit, sorry. No, it's an underrated unit. It's the most powerful uh, Jav Cav. Actually, no, it's not. I lie. I'm, I'm speaking out my bum. Pontic Heavy Cav are the strongest Jav Cav. But they're a close second. But they're also very fast. They're, uh, I found their morale is normally better than just the typical Javelin Cav. Should we have a look at the stats? They have a good morale. Yeah, that normally isn't for most uh, most Jav Cav units. Yeah. Okay, let's fast forward this. Okay. Now, the only really dangerous unit we have here is that general, those archers. Okay, we're going to run all the way down here. Now, even though this is going to tire me out, it's going to tire them out a whole lot more. They have to rule our uh, cheap peasant units with poor morale and low. Uh, what's it? Not low fitness. What's the word? Is there a stamina? Low stamina. So my guys will recover a lot faster than they will. Once they run down this hill and up again, they're going to be very tired, if not exhausted. Okay, how close are they at them? 
That's close enough. So I can run right on by. Now because they put a wall on the settlement, it means I can't just run in and cap them. I have to take out one of their units. So we're going to see which unit wants to jump ahead. Anything but the Nubian Spearmen. There's a general. Now those archers are going to be a pain. Because if I take any other unit, those archers are going to fire in and cause a lot of damage. Okay, that's good normal speed. Okay, we're in the settlement. Okay. Now these guys are going for this side over here. Let's take this gate. Okay. Where are they going now? They're going across over here. Let's take this gate. These guys aren't a concern, they're going to come back. Okay, that's... Is there any point in killing him? Wait, what? Ah, oh, for Pete's sake. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Hey, fab, it's a draw. Just fine. That's not a defeat. It just means that we stay as we are, and they are free to attack us again. I think it counts as a loss in the uh, the battle menu, but there isn't a problem. We lost any. Uh, is it one man? No, two men. We lost two men. They will be remembered forever. Okay, let's go again. A few archers this time, thankfully. Now, I could just attack them out in the open here. They are in the open, and the moment I start charging towards them, they will start to run. Or at least the um, because of the skirmish ability on the uh, the javelin men and those archers, they'll start to run. I can pick them off. But at the moment, they're fresh, or at that point, maybe uh, warmed up. 
compared to if I run them down the hill and up, they're going to be exhausted and their morale will be a hell of a lot lower. Okay. Down they come. And up we go. Got a cheeky brew in that. For the 10 or 15 minutes or so, we'd, I had to wait for the uh, for the game to draw. Okay. Yeah, once again, it's the Nubian Spearman and the archers coming down the hill. They should already be fairly tired. Probably very tired, near exhausted. Get ready to charge them in a sec. Let's go now. Okay, now we're into the settlements. They shouldn't. That's what they have. Oh, shite. Again, really? Take it, take it, take it. You, you're there. You're okay, good. Good, 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 good. Captured. Now let's take out the general. God, for a moment I thought it had gone door, um, not door. I thought it had gone gate lost again. Oh, God. Okay. Right, let's take the gate, take the back gate. Take the hot gates. Cool. Now we can cap them. Ha <laughs> ha. But our homes are there. Fab. Thieves is ours. Fab. Now we're only going to have one one unit down here, so we're not really going to be able to uh, to hold this unless we start recruiting units, and we're only going to be able to hold it then if the settlement is at a low population. So we have to exterminate. Okay, now this isn't the battle I want to fight. Hashtabel's already at the edge of his uh, his movement so I should just be able to treat yes that I can okay we have Hasdrubal on a bridge we have Egypt locked down here okay fab you know what, I'm out of time guys, I'm going to leave it there, so thank you very much for watching this first episode. I hope by the time, hope in the next few minutes I'll be able to decide what the YouTube name is going to be and I can start uploading. So, I hope to see you in the next one, and goodbye.